Welcome. This video looks on the basics of uh, Greenfoot. So how do we actually make games in Greenfoot? So one of the examples that uh, we can see uh, in the Greenfoot library when, when we open uh, from Greenfoot we can open directly uh, for example this Lunar Lander game is that there's a lot of stuff going on and um, how do we actually do that? How do we interact with Greenfoot itself? Because of course we have to do something to make things happen. So let's try to look into Greenfoot and what a framework as Greenfoot really is. Because when we are working right now, we're working in a programming language called Java, but Greenfoot is a framework for Java where we can work, make these small games and learn about Java. So let's try to uh, look at the Greenfoot homepage first to see how can we get help with this. So if we're making a game, we would want to know um, how can we interact with everything. So let's get started on that. So if we start by going to the Greenfoot webpage and just enter the Greenfoot site, um, we'll come to a web page with different kinds of things like scenarios that other people made. The games are called scenarios. Uh, you can even play them online. There are people that are very good at Greenfoot that makes excellent games that are in here. And also there is a forum in here where you can ask questions and stuff like that uh, if you have uh, any questions for Greenfoot. And people are very friendly because Everyone working with Greenfoot are beginners in some way because no one is using Greenfoot for uh, serious games. That's not what it's intended for. It's intended for learning. But you can learn a lot from this. Okay, so where do we get help? So one of the places you can get help with Greenfoot is going into other people's scenarios and, and downloading them. So if I go into this one... Um, I can open the, that directly in Greenfoot so that I can uh, you can see it even running here so you can open that in Greenfoot and see how did they make this they have a score they have someone walking around and a button or something like that so it looks pretty nice you can use some keys and stuff so if you want to know how to make a game like this you can just open it directly in your Greenfoot and then see how did they make it how did they actually do this and i think this is a very strong and a nice way of learning that you can take other people's work and see how they did it. they did it so yeah and there's a lot of scenarios um, you can go for like more and you can see there's there's really a lot most plays newest games stuff like that it's also popular scenarios like someone made an Angry Birds game here. Something like that. I don't know how it works. Maybe you have to use some keys or something like that. Yeah. But whatever uh, you want to do, you can you can look at it here. Some people prefer to learn this way by looking at other people's work and start changing that and then making their own from that. And you can learn a lot from that, of course, but it's it's kind of uh, dependent on how you learn best. So there's also this discuss thing here, which is kind of a forum where you can just post your questions. Then you need a login for the web page. So you see people writing different things, different questions about their problems. Um, there's uh, also the last thing uh, the last way of getting help, I think, documentation here is also very important. So there is a book, of course. We have some of the chapters on Moodle, but other than that, uh, you can buy the book if you want. But uh, the chapters we have should be enough uh, for the for what we are doing right now. Um, there are some tutorials in here as well, like. Um, interacting with Greenfoot and stuff like that. Uh, there are some videos here and you can probably find a lot of stuff on YouTube as well. So, and here is also some stuff 
Um, but what I wanted to show you was the direct reference on the what is called the API, the programming interface uh, from Greenfoot, because that is what you're working with. So when you're doing games, you're working up against a programming uh, interface. So 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 you can directly look that up. The documentation for the entire Greenfoot, you can look that up online, and that is here. So if you look in here, you can see everything that is Greenfoot. So uh, there's a package called Greenfoot, and we can see that uh, in every Greenfoot game. In the top here, it says import Greenfoot. This is the package name. So this means that it will take all the code that the developers of Greenfoot made and kind of make it available to our program. And it is needed to have this package system because it can't just make everything available. Uh, that, that can get, lead to problems with naming and stuff like that. So you have to import the things that you want to do. And in this case, we import uh, Greenfoot because uh, we need that for the Greenfoot library. So there's only one package in Greenfoot and that is the Greenfoot package. So it's very easy. You only need to import one thing Greenfoot, and if you use the star notation, it means that it imports everything. So we can see that Greenfoot package uh, consists of a number of classes. And classes, this is Java classes. <clears throat> classes is something uh, we can instantiate, meaning we can make, for example, it says actor. It means that we can create actors in our game, and we've seen that, uh, for example, here, an example of an actor, we can see uh, the lander, that is an actor, because you can see the small uh, triangle here going down to uh, lander here. So lander is an actor. So this means that lander inherits from the actor in Greenfoot. So this is the way we in Greenfoot utilize the power of the Greenfoot library by writing, let's go in here, the code. We write that lander extends actor. So we import Greenfoot, um, which will only make it available to us, and then we use it here by extending actor. And extending actor makes it possible to put the actual lander inside of the game. So then there are other classes as well. There's a class called color, and we can click them. Color uh, used for representing just colors like black and blue and so forth. So this is not something that we can create. We can't create colors inside of the game like that, but it, this is just a small helper for everything. So we need to use this whenever we are talking about a specific color in, in Greenfoot. We can say, for example, I'm talking about the color white. <laughs> okay. So then there's also one called font, and this is for creating different fonts. If you want to write text on screen, we can actually define uh, which font it should use, and it can use the fonts that you have in your operating system already. And there's also, you can see it has different uh, things inside of it. So this font class has things like get name. You can get the name of this font. You can get the size. And you can also set uh, some things when you create the font. You have to set the name and if it should be bold or italic and size, stuff like that. So this is how you specify fonts. You can create new fonts. Um, inside Greenfoot and specify them here. So then there's also Greenfoot. So this is the same name as the package. So the name would be like Greenfoot is the package. And remember in Java, package names uh, are non-capitalized like this. And because Greenfoot is a class, it has capital start letter like this. So if I were to only have Greenfoot imported, I would do like this. So packages and classes are like domain names. They are 
uh, dotted, so Greenfoot Greenfoot means the Greenfoot class on the Greenfoot package. So we could also write, for example, actor here, then we would only import the actor. But let's go back to import everything. So if we look here and don't know what we can do with Greenfoot, we can look in here and see that there's a lot of things here. We can get input from the user by using something called ask. We can get, uh, we can delay the execution. We can get a key. We can get the microphone level. We can get information about the mouse. We can get a random number. Uh, if we're making a, a dice game or something like that, we can look to see if there's a key pressed down right now. We can see if there's a click with the mouse. We can see if someone is dragging the mouse. We can see if someone play. We can play a sound from a file. We can set the speed of the execution. That is basically this one here. We can change that from within the code itself, and we can also start and stop the program actually from from Greenfoot directly. So that also means we can write some code actually to start the program. Whenever someone loads it into Greenfoot, it starts immediately. Or we can stop the, the entire game by using the stop command here. So this, these are the kind of general things like key presses, input from uh, microphones and um, uh, getting input from the text input from the user with this ask uh, thing. So this is very nice. So if we already imported uh, this, let me just show you. Ah, I think I'll wait on that, so this is for now. So also we have something called Greenfoot image. This is basically used for um, something like the lander. This image here is a green, called a Greenfoot image. And this is specified by right-clicking the lander and using set image or we can do it in code as well. So it, we can also set the image. For example, um, at some point here, if the lander goes too fast, the image changes into the, an explosion. Like that. So kind of, uh, oh, here actually it's just switch with an explosion, but we could change just the image of the lander into an explosion. That would be a simpler explosion something like that so that's it yeah yeah so the greenfoot image is whenever we need to interact with images and there is a lot of stuff we can do with that it's kind of complex we can even draw our own images in code so we can draw things like lines and circles it's called ovals here we can do, draw polygons uh, rectangles things like that we can make an image like if we opened up paint and drawing on that we can do that directly in code which can be quite neat we can do some some specific graphics uh, in the game or we could make maybe even make our own version of paint greenfoot paint and uh, people could uh, draw their own images in here or we could load in images and draw directly on the images so we can make something like a small image editor something like that we can we can uh, see the colors we can do mirroring rotation things you already know from things like like paint so it's kind of like uh, paint you can do a lot of things you just have to code it all in Java and then there's one called Greenfoot Sound. It's kind of self-explanatory, but this is for playing sounds in the game. So we can pause and start and stop it and play it in a loop, set the volume, stuff like that. Uh, mouse info is, is a helper. It's like a helper class for getting information about the mouse. We saw in Greenfoot that we can actually uh, get mouse info and that will return an object of uh, this mouse info here. So uh, when we have that object, we can do things like get actor. If the, the, if the, whatever we did, for example, if we click an actor, we can get it like that. We can get uh, buttons if that is the clicked ones. We can get the most important thing is probably get the X and Y coordinates of the mouse. 
So for example, if we click something, we can get the coordinates for the mouse. So that for example, we can have something following the mouse or something like that. Then there's something called user info. So this is more like if we want permanent storage and this is not something we're going to work with, but uh, you can look into it if you think it's it would be nice. This video is more about how can we actually use this uh, documentation here. Then there's the world, which is the world class we see that is kind of the game world. So in this case, it's moon. We can create like this new moon here. So here we have one, but you can have multiple worlds here. Uh, for example, if you have multiple levels or something like that. Just like you can have multiple actors and you can switch between the worlds. For example, Moon could create a new world of uh, another type like Mars. So whenever you you land correctly on the Moon, you could create an, a Mars level and open it up here. And we all know that uh, the Moon and Mars doesn't have the same gravity. So there would be differences in how fast it would fall and stuff like that. So we can create multiples for that, one for each planet or something like that. So, so we can have multiple worlds. And again, in here we can see what can we actually do on a world and there's a, a lot of stuff. So you should probably know that um, what you can't see from this is that when I create, when I add a lander into the game, I actually add it to the world. So when I create a new lander and kind of drop it like that, I'm adding the lander directly into the world. So we should be able to see if we go to, to the moon, not the real moon, just the code. Um, we can see some code here saying add object, for example. So add object is a method that is on world. And this is a special case of world. This is the moon. So we extend world here and I use add object to add a new lander to the game. So I'm kind of in this line here, we're basically uh, doing like this. And these are the coordinates. So this is why when I create a new moon like this, it will put it there always because these are the coordinates for that. So 326 in the x-axis and 100 in the y-axis. So if I wanted to go up a bit, I could change this to like 50 and that would change where it puts it every time. So, okay. So add object is something that we should also be able to find in here. So if we look here uh, in the top, of course, because they're alphabetically sorted, we can see the one here called add object. And that takes an actor and it takes the X and Y coordinates of the actor where we want to put it in the game. What we can see here is actually that when we do add object here, this object is added to a list of objects on the moon. So the moon knows which objects are uh, uh, put into the world. So when I add the object, the moon will remember that that object is there and it can also see where it is. So we can also see the X and Y coordinates and stuff like that by knowing about the objects here. So that is why if we go to, to Greenfoot, back to the Greenfoot documentation, we can see we can get objects here with, with world, which is very, um, very nice feature. So there's something here called get objects that can give us all the objects that we have in the world. We can, for example, specify we want all objects of a specific class. So I could say I want all the, uh, if I want to know the coordinates of, of this, I can ask the world to get all the objects and get the uh, lunar lander here. And then it will return that uh, and only that. So if I had multiple objects, it would only return that. You can also remove objects from the world. This can be quite handy. For example, when this lands, when it, 
when it explodes, it should be removed from, from the world, right? So we should be able to see something like, uh, if we go into explosion, for example, we can see here that uh, this is the act method for explosion. And as you might remember, this is what's done each time uh, that time passes. So uh, in here we can see it, this is actually resizing the explosion. This is because we can see the explosion kind of uh, expands and then disappears. So this is this is what that code looks like. But the interesting thing here is that from the explosion itself, we get the world and we tell the world to remove an object. And this, it says this here, this actually refers to the object itself. So it actually tells the world, hey world, uh, please remove this object and then sends itself there. So please remove me from the world, it says here. So that is why we can see that it kind of disappears after exploding. Otherwise, we would still be able to see the image there. So, so this is so. There's a lot of stuff here going on. We can see the background, we can, uh, image, we can uh, by using Greenfoot image as well, and all this other stuff here. The height and width could be nice to know of the world itself. We can get the cell size, we can get background image out so we could draw on it if we wanted to. We can uh, yeah, add all the objects that we want. And of course, like all the uh, actors in the game, there's also an act method on the world. So, so that's it. So this is how you interact and this is also really nice. So one thing I didn't mention is the actor. It also have a lot of methods here. So of course it has the act method, which is very important. This is where everything happens. But other than that, we can check to see here, for example, add it to world. We can check to see if the actor has actually been inserted into the world. We can get the image, the Greenfoot image. So for example, for the lander, uh, we can see this small image here. We can actually get that out so we can change it. We can get, there's nice nice things that we use for games like get neighbors. So we can take a distance, say within five cells of me, give me all the uh, all the missiles or something. So you can look if you're close to something. You could, for example, simulate something like an ant running around and say, if there's food within five cells, move towards that food and eat it. There is something called um, uh, get objects at offset. There's something called get objects in range. So there are different uh, things to look at there to see what is going on around uh, this object that we've created. There's also things like get one intersecting object. That is when two objects actually touch. And that's very important in games, right? If you're playing a shooter or something, you want to know if the bullets are hitting you or not. So if, the, if you intersect with a bullet, you die. That's really simple, right? So you can, you can look into stuff like that. Also, yeah, some offset as well. You can get the rotation of uh, the object you're working on. You can get the world for that object. You can get the world of a specific type if you want to. You can get the X and Y coordinates of your object. You can uh, check to see if it interacts with a specific actor. You can see if it's at the edge because sometimes it's nice to know if you go to the edge of something kind of you can return and go in another direction. You can check to see if it's actu actually touching uh, some objects and right now I can remember the difference between touching and intersecting but there's probably some minor difference here yeah the difference is that um, 
uh, is touching is saying you can specify for example am I touching any bullet so I can write bullet in here and I will know if I'm touching any bullet in the game so I'll only get a yes or no for that bullet up here I'm asking am I touching a specific bullet for example bullet number 15 that came out of the gun am I touching that one so this is for specific bullets and this is for all bullets something like that okay here we have move so this is a really nice feature because it's kind of vectors we can say that we just want to move a specific distance and we already know the direction so we have a distance and a direction which is really nice for animations and stuff like that because you don't need to uh, remember if you use coordinate systems this can be quite complex let's not go into that it's just nice that we can just move and we can change direction and then it moves in that direction then we have um, other stuff removes an object uh, if it's touching then we have for setting images we want to change the looks of our object in the game and then we can set a new location so if we kind of have our lunar lander like I'll just try again uh, if we have our lunar lander if we use the set location it's equivalent to just doing like this then we're setting a new location directly so it's not like a moving where it moves smoothly it just pops directly to that location no delay or anything and of course we can set the rotation directly in degrees or <coughs> or we can turn we can turn uh, any amount here in degrees as well turn towards so if we know the x and y location of another object in the game we can turn towards that object so that is basically everything uh, within the greenfoot within the Greenfoot library, the Greenfoot framework for creating games. So now you know you can go here to the API by uh, going into <coughs> sorry by going into the documentation and the reference here. And you can also go directly there from within the game. So if you're doing a game, here I have this dog. I should be able to go into actor directly for example just by double clicking actor and I can see the documentation right here we can also get help by pressing control space in some cases for example if I'm in here if I press control space sometimes it works sometimes it doesn't but right now I can't get it to work here but normally you can press control space you'll get some 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 help with this uh, sometimes it's a bit boggy like here but uh, yeah so it doesn't work right now yeah but I think the easiest thing is just to have this open in the background you can easily there are not many classes so if you want to know what can I do with my dog here I can go click actor here and then go in here and say okay what can I do I can get like oh I can get the rotation or I can like turn and then I can go back to the code and now it says move here with the dog so I could do something like uh, turn and I can see in here it says you, I need the amount and that is the, the amount in degrees so I could turn like 25 degrees that's probably a lot so I'll just turn 4 degrees and then we can kind of uh, test our game and see that these uh, my dog is stuck let's try again oh it kind of stopped now so uh, let's start up here oh I, I forgot I made this stop at some point that's why so we're looking at the health and kind of yeah so that's it so whenever it does 60 steps it will just stop but you see the elephants it's the same thing here we use the move and we use <coughs> sorry 
we use move and we use turn for the elephants and I found out just by looking in here because I know the elephant is an actor on the Greenfoot framework I can go into the Greenfoot documentation and find out that it has all of these methods and one of the very simple ones is just to turn and move Okay, that's it for uh, getting help. Of course, it can be a good idea to talk on Facebook as well or use any other kind of forums. So that's it for this video. So just to recap, um, this was all about where can we find help and documentation. We can go to the Greenfoot website. We can find the we go into here we can find under documentation different tutorials over here we can find videos over here other stuff here if you want to go with math we can look into YouTube of course you know that already you can go and and the most important thing in this video is that you can go to the reference directly which I like because it's very easy to find things and just look them up directly here the different classes and try to use them in here and if you're in doubt you can always try to open up some of the example scenarios maybe from go to the scenarios part of the web page find someone else's scenario and um, oh this guy doesn't give you the ability to open that up in Greenfoot most people do though Let's see if we can find yeah so in this one we can click open in Greenfoot and then just see directly how did they do it uh, and this can often help us to achieve something ourselves that we want to do. So here we can see some movement with some snakes and some ladybugs. So I think maybe I need to control the ladybug or something here. Oh, I was eaten by the snake. I didn't know snakes were that much into ladybugs. Yeah, but but something like so you can open up here and and look at that. So that's just the recap of everything. So uh, good luck, and that's the end of it.